it pretty much amazes me that how much we are going to learn within just one project that we are going to finish up in this video. This is going to be a longer one. Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and let's get started and continue our React journey. We are into the world of React journey, we are trying to master React concepts one at a time in each of the project. This helps us in building our portfolio projects so that this shows a constant learning journey that we have. We have ample amount of projects so that we can showcase them as well as can learn them in one go. Uh, when you build a kind of a big project, of course there is a learning there as well, but I believe that as a beginner getting started, building multiple smaller projects which focuses on each concept one at a time is rather a better approach. So this is exactly what we'll be doing in this video. So let me first walk you through uh, what we're going to build and this will help you to understand a customized hook. You will be able to build your own hooks just like we were able to use, use a state, use effect, use callback and whatnot. We will be able to design our own custom hooks. This will give you so much of confidence that, hey, hooks are not that much complex. I can design my own hooks for that. As a matter of fact, we will learn how we can make the API request and get some data from the APIs and can utilize this in our application. And we will also see that how a component is being designed, a reusable component. So far, we haven't much focused on reusability of the component, which is one of the core principle and core strength of the React itself. So we'll be focusing on that part as well. So without a further ado, let me go ahead and give you an overview. Now that you have a list of what we are about to see, let's see that what we are going to learn in this project. So this is the project that we'll be building. Of course, it's on Tailwind. So we will not be again much focused on how this corner radius works on. That's not our case. Uh, the goal is to understand the concept of the component reusability. The first thing that you can see here is that this component uses this top input component, which is exactly same. Only the data is getting changed, like from gets changed to to. The, the value here might change here as well. Then the currency type, this is exactly same. The drop down list, this is exactly same here. And this is obviously same here as well. So uh, no much big deal. If we design this component, it makes sense so that we can reutilize it later on as well. Uh, we won't be making any component for the button or the swap. Uh, this is exactly same. These are just used to change the to and fro values. So very simple, basic uh, swapping of the variables that we have. What's interesting about it is if you choose uh, like how much is the value for the 10 USD and you convert it, it actually gets you the value. And the value that it is bringing up is actually coming up from a URL itself. And that is very, very interesting of a URL. Let me show you what URL we are actually using. So this is a URL. By the way, you can get this URL from the project description. So all the projects are available on my GitHub account. You can just get into uh, that repository, that file, which I'll actually give you and can grab this URL. The good thing about this URL is the end portion of this URL. At the end of it, you can write something like usd.json. And once you write usd.json, it gives you a key of USD and appropriate conversion of each values. Like I am from India, so INR conversion of each of this is actually available. But not only that, I can make the conversion for, for example, INR. So all the currencies you can pass on in the URL itself, and it gives you like INR conversion. So how much one INR will be in each of these currency, that conversion automatically happens. Uh, not a big deal. It actually converts a simple API, which does the multiplication. But this is a little bit complex of an API than rather hitting the basic APIs. Like for example, uh, there is this API.github where you get the data. This data never changes. You get the data, arrange this data into some uh, cards, some photos or something like that, and you get happy with that. Uh, for example, we have another one, which is very famous project, which is random a user, random user me. This is also exactly almost same. What you see on the data here, this is exactly the data. Only the data changes, the format never changes, no such thing. So this is exactly kind of a same API that we are handling. Here we are handling a tiny bit more uh, than the previous one because the INR changes here. We need to make a request here. We have to modify the URL and then they get the appropriate things. And then the key value pairs, we need to actually get all the keys so that we can show these keys all up here. So there's a little bit more involved in this one. So that will be taken care by the hooks itself. Very fun project. Initially, you thought it would be very basic, but now you're realizing, ah, oh, there's a lot of work that we need to do. And of course, Tailwind is going to be our friend for this one. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. So here's my source code. I'll just kill this one. So, okay. Uh, it's still running. I'll destroy this. And we have the fifth project being done. Now let's go ahead and take down the sixth project of this series. 
Again, same npm create wheat and we'll be using the latest. Just go for that. We'll be going with the very basic. So this is 06, I guess. And this will be currency. All lowercase would be good. Converter. And we'll be, of course, React and JavaScript. And I love how easy it is to actually go ahead and work on with this one. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up into integrated terminal. That's much more easier for me. npm install. And we need to go ahead and install the Tailwind as well. So we can just come up here, the same guide of the Tailwind. I always come up here because anyways I have to do it. There is no point of doing it behind the scene and I don't really prefer that. So I'll just copy this, go back up here, wait for a few seconds till it loads all the things. Uh, please don't mind me sipping some lemon water. Uh, missing my tea today. Uh, but there's so much of these long videos that I need to grab something to drink. Okay, so the Tailwind is here, and hopefully this will give us the Tailwind file. There we go, Tailwind config. And just like the previous one, we'll be just copying and pasting the content part, since we are in the wheat. Content part is done. Uh, next up is we need these uh, directives. Okay, and this needs to go into source, our main index.css. Remove everything, paste it up here. There we go. Uh, we also don't need anything from the app.css, so we'll be just selecting and removing all of this. We don't need it. Uh, close all of this, close this, and save this, and close this. Now, technically, in theory, we should have the Tailwind, but again, the only way to verify is via writing some of the custom CSS. Let's go ahead and remove this, and simply have an H1, and we'll say test for Tailwind. All right, let's go up here, and we'll be saying class name bg dash red dash 200 should be good enough and let's go back we haven't run this npm run dev and let's see okay uh, this is working uh, let's go ahead and work on with this one uh, this is not really that much of a complex data or a complex project we'll be working with this uh, so let's go ahead and work with this Let's close this one. And the first thing that we'll be doing is, let's just cut out all of this. We'll cut this one out, remove this one. Instead of this, we'll be having a basic div. Let's have an H1. Now inside this, we'll be having some of the classes. So again, the classes will come up from our code files that I already have uh, when we build the project. So we'll not be talking about the code files at all. Uh, the only thing that we are going to worry about after this is actually one more thing. I want to add a style into this one. Now, after the style, we would love to have a simple a background image just like this. But instead of the background image going like React logo or something, we will be actually getting the background image from... Uh, you can grab it from asset as well, but you can directly inject the URL. In my case, I'll be just directly pasting a URL. And let's go ahead and remove this. From where you can grab the URLs of the images, I'll show you resource as well. One of the resources that I prefer to use a lot is Pexels. Yes, I do contribute myself on Pexels quite a lot. These are all photos that I clicked. Uh, feel free to choose any photo out of these, which makes sense to you. And we'll be searching for a photo that actually represents money or something like that. Okay, which one? This one looks good. I'll just copy the image address and paste it up here, and let's see how does that look. In the Vite project, there we go. So, decent, not the perfect. Uh, we can definitely change the backgrounds and colors and whatnot, but I think this is good enough for us as of now. Uh, we'll be having a couple of more CSS and all these stuffs, but first let's talk about the functionality part. This is more than enough for us as of now. Okay, first of all, uh, we need an input box. So, the designing of input box is not really something which should bother us. This is how the input box looks like. But how to design the components which are reusable, what are the things we need to take care, that is what we are going to discuss. So inside the source, just right click and create a new folder. We are going to call this one as compo component or components, however you like. And the only component that we have as of now is input box. So let's create a new file. Input box dot JSX, of course, and RFCE. Uh, our AFCE, yeah, that, that actually makes sense. Or I'll go for the RFCE. Okay. 
RFC. There we go. Finally, we have an input box and we are exporting this. Now with the input box, how many of the things you want to accept? Uh, that's totally up to you. I want to accept this label. I will be accepting an amount as well because I'll be using it uh, from different perspective. Uh, in some of them, user will give the amount. In some of them, I'll be adjusting the amount. So obviously I need an amount. What happens when the amount change? So I need a method uh, which will be responsible for changing the amount. And that method will be state. So how we'll be doing that? We'll actually keep this method as it is. But in our app.jsx, there we'll be designing some of these classes itself so that we can have all these basics, amounts and how the amounts are being set, currency, converter and all of that. But in order to have that amount, we need to have something which can set the amount as well. So that's my number one goal. Uh, what happens when the currency is changed? So this is something we need to take care of that. Uh, what happens when the currency changes? So there needs to be something which is keeping a track of all these states. At least there should be a method. All the currency options, I will obviously be taking this one. So this is a input box itself. It doesn't do anything on its own. The whole idea and the whole job is just take the values and display them. That is what we have. And uh, there might be cases, in this case, this is an input box or the input value which is disabled. So which currency, like you will be obviously reusing this. So which one you can enter the data and which one you want the component to be disabled. So you have to check for that one is amount enabled or disabled into that one. Uh, currency disabled, like here you can see the currency is disabled in this one. And of course, if any additional classes that you want to give me. So there is a lot of data that we are getting through this one. And you don't know this data entirely at the first go. Eventually, as you want to make your co components more reusable, you add this one. So let's go ahead and work on with this one. So first of all, we have this label that we'll be taking as a prop into this one. We obviously need to take amount. These are obvious one. Now next, what we need to take is on amount change. What happens when the amount change? So something state needs to be there. Some method needs to be there, which keeps a track of that. And what happens on the on currency change. So this on currency change is what happens when the user change the currency. How to utilize them, I'll walk you through with that as well. But these are some of the basics. Then obviously you need a currency option. Currency options. And we'll be setting up some of the default values because it will be an array. We expect that. How we get the array, that is not our concern as of now. I want to get all these currency as in, in the format of array so that I can just look through them and provide the values there. Now, obviously, by default, we need to show some currency. So that also needs to be taken care of that. So we'll be saying we need a selected currency. And by default, we'll be going with the USD. And no suggestion there. Okay, this is my by default currency. And do you want this amount to be enabled or disabled? That somebody needs to tell to us. So we'll be saying amount disabled and by default we'll be getting a false value because we don't want to disable it by default if the user asks us we will disable that and we'll be also checking the currency disable so if the currency is enabled disabled user is allowed to change the currency or not it's totally up to you uh, you want to have it have it if you don't want to have it that's okay as well so we'll be saying uh, currency disabled by default that's false we'll also take some of the class name as well uh, this is a very common pattern that you'll be taking a lot of class name. Of course, you'll be designing your component, but you will also give the user a chance that, hey, I'll be allowing you so that you can actually get all of these values. All right, so now let's go ahead and design this input box itself. First of all, we'll be having some of the classes as well. Classes I'll be copying and pasting from here itself. Now, we won't be putting the classes just like the strings because we'll be taking some of the classes as the props. So we need to keep a safe area where I can inject the classes which are injected by somebody who is using our component. So we'll be just removing this one here. We'll be injecting our JavaScript here. Now in the JavaScript, of course, we can use the backticks. Now the advantage of this backtick is, since I've taken the prop, I can just use my fillers here and can add the class name here. Now this is something which user is passing, but since this is just a string, I can just go ahead and copy my CSS classes that we have. So there we go, really basic, absolute nice. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and remove this. So this is our basic card that it, it was designed. Uh, let's go ahead and design this class uh, div. This is also going to have some of the class names. Let me grab the class name, it's simple. Width we want uh, to be half of it, so we'll be saying one by two. Very basic. And then we'll be having some of the labels and input. So let's first grab a label. 
and label HTML4. We will be injecting some of the JavaScript here in a minute. Uh, just wait for it. Right now we don't want to have it. Uh, or let's just remove the entire HTML4 for, uh, for a minute. Then we'll talk about the usability and how we can actually uh, make it more accessible. Okay, uh, we have some classes here as well. So let's go ahead and add a class name. I'll be adding the class name from my notes. Copy and paste. Classes, we won't be talking even a tiny bit. We'll be always getting it like this. And this will be adding as a label. Remember, we don't want to hard code it because user will be using it this label for multiple purpose, maybe from, maybe to. Okay, this part is all good. Now, once we have this label inside this, we want to have an input field. So we'll be having an input field just like this. And let me just break it onto a next line. There we go. Now this input field uh, will have a type of number because that's what we want. Number, there we go. Now what else do you want to have into this one? There are multiple fields that you want to have. First of all, let's take down the obvious ones, which is the class names. And again, the class names goes as it is, whatever we have in notes. Don't really care about it, don't want to even talk about it. Then we have the type, then obviously let's grab a placeholder value. Uh, you can grab the placeholder value as whatever you like. We'll be just saying it as amount. Depends if you want to take this input as well from the user, uh, you can take it. Uh, right now, if I don't enter anything into this one, it is, this one is zero. Uh, this one actually doesn't do anything. So it's always zero. Totally up to you if you want to put this placeholder any value or something like that. Okay, uh, next up is, is the field disabled or not? Uh, that depends on amount disabled or not, whatever the value you have given by using this one. Uh, the value, the value is going to be amount, whoever is using it is going to give me. But the most important thing is, if you just keep it as it is, then obviously you'll be having some amount, but there is nothing which is helping you to change these values. So what you have to do is, this method on amount change will be responsible for changing the amount. So obviously we have to listen for an event which is on change on change and we have to use this on amount change but we cannot just use it like this otherwise we are never using the method we have no idea about the functionality or anything of that so just cut this out here we want to use a callback let's go with this and obviously we'll be tracking an event so let's just call this one as e for an event and then we have to first make sure that we have the presence of this on amount change this could actually make or break your application so for the standard practices such uh, values are being checked first so we'll be checking on amount change. If this on amount change exists, then we go ahead and say that use this on amount change and get an e.target.value. But again, there is a problem into this one. Uh, whenever you grab the values like this, you will be grabbing a string and we don't want a string. We want actually a number out of it. So before we actually grab it, uh, we'll cut this out and we'll be casting this one as a number and then e.target.value. These are just additional safety checks, nothing to be worried too much. We are just trying to make sure that our code is as standard as possible. And these are only, only safety check. If you directly come up here and say E and then simply say on amount change, E dot target value, uh, maybe your application might work and eventually you might have to debug, but this is a good standard practice that we have. All right, so this is all good. And now we have to go ahead and work on with this one. So this is a part of only having this part, the currency, the numbers and everything. We have to work on this currency type as well. So this is the second portion where we'll be working on. So let's just go below this div. We need to have another div. This one obviously will have first the class names. And let me just grab all the classes. So this is the right portion that we are working on. Notice here the currency type and USD. So this is why we have flex and all of that. So the next part is all about it. Let me go up here. First of all, a simple paragraph that says currency type. So nothing extraordinary currency type. It always is currency type. So we are, we are done with that. Now comes up the interesting part is how we are going to take care of this USD and all these input values. Now this is a select field. So let's go ahead and grab a first of all a select field. There we go. Now in this select field, first and foremost, let me just grab onto the next lines. And here also you go away. Okay, first of all, class name, because there is a styling involved into this one. Not worried about styling, even in case, I highly recommend you, in fact, you change the styling. At least you will be contributing something in the project. Your hands will work onto the keyboard and that's always a good thing. Now, what should be the value? 
the value should be uh, based on the select currency that we have. Uh, selected currency. Notice here, uh, we have the selected currency. As of now, we are taking this as USD by default, but user should be able to allow and change this one. But we'll, we are happy with this selected currency as of now. Uh, what happens with the on change? There we go. Now again, you might have noticed the exact same pattern that we are following. We will be following this one as well. Here we chose an event. We set that whether this uh, on currency change method is available to us or not. And based on that will work. So very repeatable pattern. So yes, we'll be seeing very standardized code in this entire series. So we have this event. After that, we go ahead and check. Do we have this on currency change? If we have this, then we go ahead and uh, use the second part of it, which is on currency change and we simply go ahead and grab the e.target.value. Here we don't need any number casting or anything because these are just strings. All right. Okay. Next up, uh, is this field enabled or disabled? Uh, that maybe you want to design an application which is uh, disabled, having these field disabled. But in our case, uh, disabled currency disabled is mostly false. But maybe, maybe you don't want user to change this type. It's always USD to INR or INR to USD. Maybe that's the case. So we are just taking care of that. Okay, uh, select field alone doesn't work. So we need to have uh, these options getting inside this one. Uh, for these options, we obviously have to loop through the values. So we'll be using our JavaScript here. And inside this, we'll be saying, hey, all the currency options that you are providing to us, remember currency options is an array, in case you forget. This is the currency option, which is an array. I want to loop through this value. Looping is pretty simple. I just have to say dot map, and there we go. This is my map. Inside the map, I'll get a callback. So let's go ahead and grab a callback. No problem at all. And in each of this, you will get a currency. Uh, so let's just call this one as currency. Now with each of the currency, what we'll be doing, instead of using curly braces, I'll be using parenthesis so that I don't have to return anything. I'll just go inside this and we'll say that I'll get an option. So option and thank you. Uh, the key is going to be currency because we know that our API actually gives us these uh, values and each of these values are actually in itself unique. So we don't have to worry about it. Uh, all the options that we get into the array, we will be crafting and designing the array in such a way that each of the currency is unique in itself. The value is going to be currency and this one is also going to be currency. Too many currency, but this is how exactly options and everything works. Remember, a lot of people did the mistake uh, when I was teaching it earlier. A lot of people just use the curly braces here. So make sure you don't do the mistake. All right. So this seems like a very nice approach that we have taken of designing an input. Uh, one more feature I would like to discuss, not a feature, but a standard practice that is used quite a lot, is once you have designed these components, you actually have these uh, index file into these components not necessarily, but usually you have. All you do in these files is actually you go ahead and import these input boxes like this and just go ahead and export uh, like this input box. Uh, the advantage of this is I don't have to actually go individually in each of the component. All I have to do is import the components, this index file, and I can bring in any component from this in this one. Maybe later on when we'll be designing, of course we'll be designing, uh, there might be 5, 10, 15 components in each one of them. Having all of them listed in index is actually a better thing. So that's what we'll be using. Nothing too much to be worried, but yeah, these kinds of things do exist. All right. Uh, moving on, let's take care of the URL part. So we have this URL we'll be working on with this one. But the way how we are going to take care of this one is via designing our own custom hook. You can, of course, do all of this into your use effect hook, into the app.jsx as well. But there's so much of the things that we actually require from this that I don't want to do all of this mess into app.js. Rather, I prefer to do all of this into a separate customized hook. By using that hook, I will return the data, whatever is required. All right, so let's go ahead, right click, create a folder, and we'll be calling this one as hooks. It's totally up to you how and what you want to name this one. Uh, the only uh, kind of a standard practice is to use use before hooks, too many use. Uh, use use effect, use callback, whatever that is. In this case, we will be using uh, use currency info. That is our hook, use currency info.js. And now what we have is will be, we just write simple. This hook is actually nothing more than a function. So use your classic React, use your classic JavaScript, uh, fetch the API, get the data, and return the value. That is it. That is in, that is literally your hook. 
So we'll be needing some other stuff. Obviously, we'll be needing use effect uh, and we'll be needing user state, of course. All right. Now let's just go ahead and simply say, hey, we'll be having a function. That function will be uh, use currency info. Uh, nice, all of this is provided to me, <laughs> uh, but I'll be writing that anyways. So use currency info is my hook. And after that, we'll be saying export default use currency info. That is all good. Now, how we are going to go ahead and work on with this? First of all, whatever the data is I'm getting retrieving from the API call, I need to store that. So for that, I'll be saying that let's call this one as data, set data, and by default, uh, this is not an array. That is a wrong suggestion here. If you notice, this is an object. Notice here, this whole thing is an object, and I want to store this object up here. So we'll be working on with that. Okay. Now, how can I go ahead and fire this up? As soon as somebody uses this hook, so as soon as this hook will mount. So again, uh, this hook is nothing more than just a function. Just like your app.js is a component, it mounts, this hook will also mount. So I can go ahead and use a use effect here. And we use a use effect snippets uh, right now on which you are dependent. Uh, you are dependent on a couple of values, but... Oh, one more thing. Whenever whoever is using this use currency info, he needs to provide me the currency. Otherwise, how will I know that in what currency you are looking for data? Because my API looks for INR as well. It looks for uh, the USD as well. So you need to provide me at least one data that based on this, I want to call the API. So once you have this currency, I'll first remove all of this part. It's not, it's a boilerplate code. And I'll also remove this third, which is boilerplate code. Now, anytime anything changes INR to, let's just say, USD, I obviously want to refetch the request. So the dependency of this use effect is obviously the currency. Any change in the currency, I want to refire this one. For here, I can use Axios as well. I would prefer to use Axios, but in this case, I'll be using uh, just the fetch. So I'll be saying fetch just like this. You can await, use however you like. I'll be using backticks in this one. Now just go ahead and copy this data and I'll paste this one. The only thing that I have to do is just change this USD. That's exactly what I was changing in the URL as well. So let's just inject our variable just like this, absolute basic, and just add a currency. Whoever is calling this hook is actually passing me this variable, so no problem at all. Now, once we have this, then obviously, uh, based on this, we'll be having a dot .then or dot .catch, whatever. So we'll be using a dot .then. Inside the dot .den, we will be having a callback. So just like this, there we go. And we will have a response. This response needs to be converted into JSON because sadly I'm not using an Axios. I'll walk you through with the Axios as well. That's much, much better. I don't have to do this JSON conversion and everything. Uh, after this chaining, we need to further chain on one more because that's where we actually get our data. So uh, we can call it with any other name as well. I'll call this one again as a response. And once we have this response, we'll be fetching this entire response into the set data, the data, the state that we have designed. And inside this one, most importantly, uh, I cannot just go ahead and say set data like this. Of course, this is a method, but what data? If you notice here, uh, this is exactly, I don't want to fetch it entirely because this also includes this date component. I want to insert only one key there whose value is USD. So I want to insert the data from the key of USD and this whole thing I want to inject, not the date. So for this, I can actually go ahead and access so all this response, this whole response is. So from this response, whatever that is, I want to just go ahead and provide this USD. So there we go, USD. But this USD changes based on INR. If we have INR, this changes. So this is exactly the currency. I can go ahead and paste this currency. Cool. Okay. So this one is nice. All right. So all we have got this one. Now... Now what we want to do is, whoever is using this hook, we actually need to return the data to him. And what we are returning back, if you notice it closely, we are returning all of this, this guy here. So this is again an object, but in this object we have key values. So 00, zero uh, lynch, whatever that currency is. I haven't been to most of these countries and trust me, I have traveled around 40 countries. <laughs> A lot of them I don't know. Okay, so this is what we have. So as you might have noticed, that designing the custom hook is not that much bad. It's actually pretty easy. This is just a basic function. We could have done this all into app.js as well, but this would have unnecessarily just complicated the stuff into the same file and segregating your logic is always a good idea. And by the way, in case you want to have this, there is absolutely no shame in just console logging the data. 
In fact, when you are learning the things, it's a good idea to logging every single thing, finding its data type, finding its value. I encourage that quite a lot. Okay. So, so far all good. Uh, now let's go back into the app.jsx. Finally, we are in here. And now let's take care of a lot of things because all the things are actually dependent on a lot of the things that we are doing. For example, this input box, from where you're going to give me this label amount, all of that, some, some place you need to give it to me. And that place is basically your app.js. So this is where we'll be going through. Okay, let's design a lot of states. So we'll be getting an amount and set amount. Uh, okay, we'll be getting a use state. Okay, cool. Uh, we also need to get a from. So we'll be saying from. And this one is going to be set from. By default, it will be USD. We also need to have a two. So set two, set two is, no, not Euro. Not Euro, that's very expensive. I'll go with the INR. Of course, I live in India, I'll go with the INR. Uh, then we also need to give the converted amount as well. And this will be converted amount. And that will be set converted amount. By default, it will be Zuri. Zero, not Zuri. <laughs> Okay, so this is the converted amount. This is what we will be filling the data up here. Okay, and a couple of more things. Actually, I forgot one thing to actually discuss with you. I should have discussed that earlier, but let's go back onto the input box. Now, this is something which is not really necessary, but still I'll discuss this. I'll talk a tiny bit about it. There is one more thing that we can do is make it a little bit more accessible. Although it is not required, but we can actually do a tiny bit more. Now we know that we have a lot of options that are going on into this one. And for all of these options, uh, notice here we are having this label as well. So this label, if I click on the form, it highlights this input field. So how can I go ahead and take this one? Because right now that's not working in our case. In this case, we have a label, but it doesn't have an HTML4. And in this, we also don't have anything. Now there are a couple of ways how we can do it. First of all, we can just go ahead and say HTML4. Okay, no suggestions. And we can just go ahead and design a simple variable or we can just give it a name itself. HTML4 is currency like this, of course, in double quotes. There we go. And similarly, in the input also, we can give that, hey, what's the ID of this one? So HTML4 and this one is ID because these are actually interrelated. We can give a currency. Uh, this will do most of our job. We don't need to actually worry too much about it. But you will notice in a lot of production grade code, especially the fan companies and big shots, they actually use something known as use ID. Yes, there is another hook. The whole idea behind use ID is to generate unique IDs. Yes, that is by default in now in React. And you'll see a lot of people use it in this format. So once I go back and before the return, I can just go ahead and say const id as use id. Now it generates a unique id for me. And all I have to do is just inject this id here instead of currency. I could have done that with the currency as well, but hey, this is how a lot of people does. So I just want to show you that yes, this is also a good practice. Uh, how much value does it add? I don't know, you decided. But yes, this is a common thing. So just wanted to have it. We have it in the notes to be discussed in this entire uh, bootcamp. Uh, but yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, moving back, uh, coming on to this one. So we have a lot of converted and all of this. Now, coming back on to uh, this use currency info, we have designed a hook for this one. This hook returns me a data. So how can I go ahead and use the value of it? Okay, let me show you. Almost all of the hooks that you have seen is just a function and it returns some values and we store that value into some variables, arrays, objects, whatever that is. Exactly like this, we'll be having these things. So what we'll be saying is, I want to have this use currency info. Uh, by, by the way, please import this uh, however you like. Uh, I like this one. So this is my use currency info. This hook requires a default value, so I can just go ahead and pass on a USD. But why to pass a USD like this when we have all of this being set in this from? So let's go ahead and remove this. Instead of hard coding, let's go ahead and do from. Uh, no suggestions, thank you, wrong suggestions. Now just hold the entire thing into a variable and we'll be calling this one as currency data or currency info would be good. That's it. You have designed a hook and you have stored all the information. Always remember what information is coming up to your data. See, most of the errors actually come up, even in production grade still, it's been 12 years, still most of the errors that I do is 
wrongfully judging what type of data that is coming up. Here it looks like that use state is an object and stuff, but you need to be 100% sure that the data, this data, when it comes to here and is being called as currency info, what is this? This is an object, this is an array, this is a number, whatever that is, be 100% sure about it. And that is why a lot of people prefer to use TypeScript just to be sa safe that what kind of data is coming into the picture. All right, enough of the side talks. Uh, these are experience talks. I think these talks actually add value. Okay, now we need to grab options. Why options? Why are you grabbing options? Because if you remember, I have this USD as a long list and I need to extract this, just a second, I need to extract all these keys from it. So these keys are important for me and these keys are actually option in my input box. Yeah, that's why I'm pulling out all these options. And turns out pulling out this one is actually a piece of cake if you have studied JavaScript. So object has a method of dot keys and inside this keys, I can just go ahead and say, hey, I'll grab the keys from currency info. Uh, no need to add rates or anything like that. That is it, I have my keys. All right, pretty good. Now I have my options and all these values being designed, nicely added and all of that. Now, what happens when you actually go ahead and actually click on convert? Actually, to be honest, nothing happens. Uh, you already have all the information with you. You have your amount. Uh, you have your currency info as well. And in whatever the currency you want to convert, you can just grab it. Now you have all the options available for you. So from this entire currency info, you want to find out INR, how you will find INR from here? Just by searching for uh, INR. So if I search for INR, that's available to me. Similarly, if I have to write a function for this, it's super, super easy. Uh, let's just go ahead and call this one as convert. There we go. How do I do the conversion? It's super simple. Use, first of all, set converted amount because that's what this is, converted amount. And all you have to do is take this amount, whatever the user has given to you, and multiply it by the currency info, which holds all of these keys, and multiply by it whenever we say uh, square brackets true. And by the way, you can access objects with the dot notation as well as with the square notation, just giving you too much of information. And in this, I'm just setting it two to INR, so I'll just find this value and this number and I'll multiply it by that. So that is it, told you. Super, super simple. By the way, we have this also method, let's design this, which is swap, which just swaps the value. And you might have already guessed that how that actually works. Super, super simple. We are just exchanging the value of from and to. That is it. That is it what we are doing. Let's go ahead and design this. We'll be having a swap. And this swap is going to look like this. So notice here how we are swapping it. Set from to to and set to to from. Uh, but we also want to change one more thing. Once we actually go ahead and say, uh, let's just say there is uh, one here. When we swap these, these numbers also get exchanged. So notice here, the numbers also get exchanged. Uh, that is nothing, uh, it's just the set converted amount uh, getting changed with the sent amount. That is it, if you want to do that. Otherwise, you just reset them. So we'll go ahead and say that, hey, I'll have the set converted amount to be changed as simply just the amount. Amount, yeah, that amount. No, no suggestions, thank you. And we'll also set amount is going to go ahead and change with the converted amount. There we go, that's it. Now all the functionality of this swap is all done. All right, now that majority of our task is done, let's go ahead and add more of the values that we have. So we have this uh, test for Tailwind, we don't need this. Uh, let me go ahead and add a couple of divs up here. Let's remove this again. This is the most boring part, but we have to go through with this one as well. Uh, in the later on uh, projects and application, I'll give you uh, the code file, which is helper file, which actually gets all these components so they can just copy and paste. For the rest of them, I have that. Don't worry. So width is going to be full. Uh, okay, once I have this inside this div, we will have another div. This div also have a class name. Let me grab all the classes that we have. Copy that, paste it up here. There we go, looks decent after this. And finally, uh, we'll be having a form because this form is actually a submit form. So that's what we are using. Let's get up a form. This form has no action, but it has some things known as on submit. And what does this on submit does? Of course, fires an event. That's what all form does. And we'll be taking this event 
And couple of things. First of all, stop prevent this form from submitting to some URLs. So that's pretty easy. Event.prevent default. That's classic. And then run our simple convert method that does all of the magic for us. Now inside this form, uh, we need to add the input box and all of these things. So first of all, we have a div here. That div also has some classes, super boring. Uh, not too much, not too much, like this. Okay, and once I'm inside this div, uh, we have the first input box. So let's grab the input box. Let's bring this and let's see how it has brought the input box. So it has brought the input box from component input box. I would rather prefer it to actually grab it from index itself. Index.jsx. Did I mention? No, it's just JS. So I would prefer to get it uh, JS. Uh, not, not, it's not like wrong to get it from input box, uh, but it's better to actually grab it because eventually when we'll be having 510 on all of this, it's better to actually grab it from here. And again, once we are grabbing it from here, uh, the reason why we actually need to change this because we have exported it like this. This is not export default. So we need to actually grab this. That's it. And then if we have more, we can just set, set the comma and just have it. So very common, but just wanted to show you all the good practices are there in incorporated into this application. Self-closing. Now it's time to provide the data to this one. So first of all, label. This label is just the from, so we don't need to do like this. We'll be just saying this is a from. Uh, amount, amount obviously will be taken care from the amount, the state that we have designed. Then we have to provide the currency options and currency options are in options. If you forgot, uh, these are options we derived from all the keys. So that's what we are passing. Uh, then we have to provide the options of what happens on currency change, on amount change and all of that. So we'll be first changing on currency change what happens when the currency is being changed. Uh, when the currency is being changed, obviously we are tracking the currency uh, into this from. So this is a from, so we are tech tracking the currency from. So let's go ahead and fire an event and update the states based on that. So we'll be going like this. And first of all, this one is going to take on the currency change. It's having a default value of currency currency why there is no suggestion currency it should be having a currency let's call this one as currency whatever the currency right now it's usd so as soon as somebody changes the currency we can come up here and we can actually remove this and can have the set set amount change set from yep set from and inside that currency will be changed so of automatically the new string value of the currency comes to us so that's first part Next up is on amount change. What happens on the amount change? Uh, we'll be taking the amount and we will be, let's just use this one better. Uh, on amount change, first of all, grab the amount. Okay, I grab the amount. Then after that, we can actually change the amount. Uh, so on amount change, we'll be setting up the amount. Oops, my bad. On amount change, yeah, there we go. We'll be setting the amount to the newer amount, whatever the amount is being changed. So on amount change handles that part. And we will also be needing a select currency, whatever the select currency is. So selected currency is, we are going to grab it from. So there we go. All right, so this is what we have as of now. Let's see if our wheat application. So notice here, we have this all from USD, all the values are being properly passed, but uh, this is not enough. We need to have uh, one more here. Uh, we'll be having a button here, so just outside of this div actually, we added another div. Yeah, too many divs. And uh, class name, very boring. And have this currency name, copy this, paste it. Inside this, there is a button which has a ton of classes. And this one is says swap. Okay, the easiest part I know, which is on click, and this will work as it is if you just go ahead and do a swap. Uh, save this, and yeah, it, it works, but we don't want it to look like this, so we'll be just adding some classes. Okay, I could have done this entire project without the CSS, but again, a lot of people just appreciate the content if it looks good. <laughs> That's why we spend extra time uh, in working with this one. All right, so button is all good. Now we have this div. Let's go ahead and just grab all of this, copy this and paste it up here. So we have the same input box, but we need to change the values very carefully. 
In fact, so much carefully that when I actually did it on my other channel, yes, I do have other channel as well. I actually made a mistake on this. So this time I want to do it more cautiously so that I don't do the mistake. Okay. First of all, label. This time I know the label is going to be two. All right. What are the currency options? Easy peasy. I can give the options all to it. Then whatever the amount is, amount will be derived from the converted amount. This is a read-only input field. So I will be giving it as uh, amount disabled as true. I can give it like this. Or if you just pass it on like this as well, that is also considered as true. All right. So that part is being taken care. Okay. Now let's go up here. Uh, first of all, what I want to do here is on currency change. What happens when the currency changes? So when the currency changes, I need to first grab the currency, whatever the currency is. So I'll just grab it. Okay. And then I'll this time change the set to currency and I'll change it to whatever the currency is. So set currency, set to and currency. I think that should be all. Now we also need to provide a selected currency, whatever the selected currency is. And in the selected currency, I can just go ahead and give an INR, but that would be bad because that's hard coded. So let's derive the value from the state itself. We are tracking this into a state known as two. And that's why we actually created this to here it is to and from. So this is what we have. Now, hopefully uh, in the previous we did mistake. Now this is working. Previously, if I change one state, it changes another state. Probably I did some mistake or something like that. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and finally add the last button that we have. A uh, very long video, but it's fun. It's fun, I hope. I hope it is. Just let me know in the comment section. I desperately read all the comment section and feedback from the students. Uh, that's my fun. Okay, uh, we'll be saying convert and the button needs an on-click. Obviously, we don't need on-click actually. We need uh, on, we don't need on. We need just the type of submit that submit. So it automatically submits. And obviously we don't want to convert to look like this. So you get that we'll be adding the classes, our classic classes. Copy that and paste it. Hopefully it looks good. <laughs> there we go. looks good. And we can actually go ahead and try this. So let's just go ahead and USD. How much is five USD and we'll convert this. It's good amount. It's good amount in India. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and remove this long string. So when the conversion is being done, you can actually use your JavaScript skills and stop this to just do numbers. Uh, I'll keep this one as up to you. Uh, but if you'll notice into our original app, we actually say it convert USD to INR and when we change something to INV or something, it changes. So how we can do that? Super easy peasy, nothing. Just start your JavaScript and then just say that, hey, uh, I want to use from and to and start your JavaScript and we'll be just saying to. And that's it. So if I go back here, it says USD to INR. Uh, maybe you won't have to all uppercase. So it's also super easy because I know these are strings. I can go ahead and use to uppercase. It's a method. And similarly here to uppercase, this is also a method. And there we go, easy peasy JavaScript. There is absolutely nothing. But if you look at this code base, let me give you a summary of this, that all what we have done, because there's so much into this video and I know this is a long video. How long? Almost an hour, hour, 40, 50 minutes. So we started by building our components. We studied the component and there is no way that you'll be designing a component this perfect when you'll be designing. Eventually you'll be keep on adding the data to the component. Maybe initially you start with label amount, that's it. Then eventually you add a currency options that I want to make my component more use reusable. So it's not like on the day one, we designed it like that. Eventually we upgraded it. And that's a thing with the tutorial because you don't want me to sit here for six hours for building this kind of application. So obviously tutorials are more polished. Uh, so eventually you'll be building all these things. Don't worry, when you'll be designing the components, you'll be not designing this as perfect. We Then we studied that how we can actually just simply take the values and ultimately what we did is just have an input field. And here we just had a select option field. So we just studied about how we can add an options field just like this. That's all what we did. Optionally, we studied a little bit about the use ID hook, not very much used, not very highly implemented, but a lot of people use it. So I just thought to have a discussion over it. Then we studied a little bit about the index way of importing the component. Again, there is nothing, nothing wrong in importing the component from the component file itself. But eventually in the long run, this will make your code more uh, scalable. That is always a good idea. 
And then we went into learning about the customized hook. This customized hook, as we learned, is nothing. Absolutely ignore these X4X. These are coming up from one of my plugins that I have. Sorry. Uh, this helps me to design the application faster. So we learned about the hooks as well. In the hooks, we saw that it's just a function, nothing else at all. This function requires a currency. And as soon as this function loads, whenever you call it, then it will fire a use effect. So at that point of time, a hook is automatically being called. This hook is fetching onto a URL. This URL you can grab from my GitHub account onto the React. Uh, I'm actually pushing this all the code on the GitHub as well. Uh, you can grab this URL. The only thing that we are changing is the currency. So we crafted the URL according to us. Then we simply taken the response into JSON and then we simply extracted some values out of it. We studied a little bit about uh, properly looking at the URL and what the data we are receiving. So we studied that in this data, we don't want everything. We just need this INR and this whole thing. So we actually derived that value out of it. So we simply said, hey, I don't want all of this. I want just the currency part. So that currency part is obviously this whole thing. So this whole thing we extracted. Very basic data nitpicking. You'll be doing this quite a lot. And then uh, we console log this and we actually return the data. That's it. That's our hook. Now inside this app.jsx, we used the state to track all the values that were required for us. And in this portion, we use the hooks as well, our own custom designed hook. This hook gives us the entire object. Out of this object, we extracted the keys because that is something we want to pass on. Classic JavaScript, nothing reactish about it. Then we studied how we can do the swap, absolutely basic function. Converted was absolutely basic. This is just one liner code. And that's why a lot of people hate, I don't want to build a currency converter, just one liner. Uh, but ours is not, ours is way more complex and way more scalable as well. Then we simply did all here. Here it was all boring, the input field, but hey, uh, cautiously add your data because I did a mistake when I was teaching it all on my other channel, but it's good, it's good. You learn your, from your mistake, it's no big deal. It takes just a couple of hours of debugging, <laughs> nothing more than that. Uh, so that is all what we have as of now. And I think uh, this video has helped you a lot in understanding how the React works, how the big scalable projects are being taken up uh, and how we constantly move on further Concepts are pretty easy when you're with me, of course. Uh, leave down a comment. It really, really helps me. If you're watching the content, I know a lot of people are watching. And when they don't leave, just a thank note in the comment section. Uh, I'm always somebody who's looking in the comment section and finds it empty. It's disheartening. So please leave the comment and I'll be thankful to you as well. That's it for this video. And let's go ahead and catch up in next another such project.